How's it going this morning? Well, Dana, I gotta say the forecast doesn't really look good. You talked about more snow on the way. We could pick up another two to four inches tonight and into tomorrow morning. And some parts of Texas are gonna be getting freezing rain, which is actually much worse. That adds to all of the ice and the snow that is already on the ground and on the roadways causing so many accidents. Temperatures are not expected to get above freezing until at least Friday for much of Texas. This will continue putting stress on the state's electrical grid. I can tell you this morning, nearly 4.2 million Texans, 4.2 million still have no electricity at this hour. Many families taking turns to warm up in their cars as wind chills overnight dropped below zero again. The power outage is making things difficult. I can't cook anything and uh, like I said, most of the things are closed or I don't want to risk going out because people are not able to drive in the, the roads that are not treated properly. In Oregon, ice continues to be the primary issue from this winter storm. More than 220,000 people are still without power. Some structural damage is also being reported because the ice is just so heavy. While in Kentucky, look at this, several inches of snow coated roadways and made for some dangerous driving conditions. Officials say several fatal car accidents have resulted from extreme weather in that state. Schools are pretty much canceled in all of these states experience the winter blast as uh, people just struggling to get warm. Dana. Thank you, Casey. We'll stay on top of it. The blackouts that are in Texas are being made worse by the failure of wind turbines, many freezing in the icy weather, cutting output in half, and it's raising questions about the Lone Star State's increasing reliance on renewable energy. Fox News contributor and Wall Street Journal columnist Bill McGurn joins us now. Welcome, Bill. Hey, I want to show you the Wall Street Journal uh, headline this morning, Ed Board, a deep green freeze. Power shortages show the folly of eliminating natural gas and coal. And let me just read to you from that piece. Gas and power prices have spiked across the central U.S., while Texas regulators ordered rolling blackouts Monday as an Arctic blast has frozen wind turbines. Herein is the paradox of the less climate agenda. The less we use fossil fuels, the more we need them. Your thoughts this morning, Bill? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of common sense. Look, everyone would like clean energy. But the fact is that the fossil fuels are far more reliable and we have a hardened infrastructure to use them. So I think there's a role, but I think they've expanded way too far. Look, nature is always going to give us cold snaps and heat waves. And the question is whether our power grid can take it. And clearly they've overexpanded. It seems that the, the goal is to have the, um, the fossil fuels marginalized, the ones that are reliable and have more of the dependence on say wind turbines. And we see how that works out. I think there's a role for these other fuels, but I think it's a mistake to subsidize them and artificially mm -hmm. you know, increase the supply there. Uh, at the, at, you know, th this has real consequences for people. I think one person's already died. Mm -hmm. I think the line from the uh, Public Utility Commission chairwoman is uh, quite telling. She says the wind turbines are all frozen. I mean, that is really something else when you have so many people suffering. I think to your point about green energy, I was looking at this earlier today. Tesla was founded in 2003. It sold its first car in 2009, mm -hmm. so that's 12 years ago. But really, the popularity of Tesla only took off, arguably, over the past two years, maybe even 18 months ago. I think to be, the point to be made there, Bill, is that the consumer will dictate what they want and do not want. And if they want it, that thing can go as high as, it, as, as, high as the market will take it. Well, I, I wish the consumer would dictate what they want because I think consumers would choose reliable power sources instead of what we have. I think, you know, energy is a highly regulated market. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people insisted on these wind turbines and they, you know, maybe they do a respectable job in normal circumstances, but we need things to be reliable and reliability. So far, the renewables cannot match the old fossil fuels in terms of reliability. Right. Until and we're seeing it, you know, in a very dramatic way. Until either the laws of physics change or the technology improves, that will be the case. Hey, you wrote, <laughs> you wrote about um, the minimum wage. And the headline in the Wall Street Journal is the human cost right. of a minimum wage, that workers have more to fear from well-meaning polls than from capitalism. Um, in the last minute we have here, Bill, tell us a little bit more about your approach. 
Well, the example that I was using is out in California in Long Beach. The city council passed an ordinance tacking on $4 in hero pay, $4 an hour for supermarket workers. Well, the idea was to fatten their paychecks. Instead, Kroger announced that they were closing two stores, putting as many as 200 people out of work. And that wasn't technically a minimum wage, but it functioned the same way. And I think what, what a lot of the proponents don't realize is that the people who are liable to be laid off, the CBO says that the $15 an hour proposal they're considering now would lose uh, 1.4 million jobs. They're at the very bottom. They're the most vulnerable workers. You know, even the New York Times back in 1987 said the ideal minimum wage is zero because it recognized that it really hurts the most vulnerable workers. So I just think before the government sets a one-size-fits-all, you know, uh, as though the conditions in West Virginia are the same as in Manhattan, uh, we ought to think about the consequences for real people. <laughs> Bill, thank you. Bill McGurn on all that today. Uh, so to much. be continued. Thanks, Bill.